día que menos ha dado 70. La madre me sirve en médico, Ana, un promedio de casi 900, casi 40. Did you catch that? This guy makes more in one day than a doctor makes in a month, and he's a taxi driver. Well, he's actually a trained engineer, but engineers make even less than doctors. Welcome to the Cuban economy. Right after the Socialist Revolution in 1959, Fidel Castro's government seized almost all private businesses and land. You won't have to worry about next year. The state will do your planning from now on. Every restaurant, factory, hospital, and home was property of the government. The state set prices for everything and decided how much people got paid. The private sector disappeared overnight. The world these men live in desperately needs economic reforms. You can see the result of this if you go looking for food in Havana today. When I showed up, I was pretty excited to see what street food was on offer. But all I could find was this. Just this. Ham sandwiches. Everywhere. Here's a typical scene in a Cuban eatery. Too many employees in an empty establishment with empty shelves. They're just waiting for food deliveries from the government and putting in their eight hours so that they can go home. They get paid the same whether they sell one plate of food or 50. This model just doesn't work. Cuba survived for many years with subsidies from the Soviet Union. Viva el comunismo! But since its collapse, the economy's been getting worse every year. This lady is showing me her government ration cards that she's kept for decades. Cubans use these cards to go to the storage houses to get their monthly rations. El aceite que es menos cantidad, los granos que son menos, el azúcar que es menos, ni hay jabón de baño, ni de, de, de lavar, ni detergente. Bueno, cada día las menos cosas. ¿Usted cree que han mejorado el proceso de alguna forma? The government realized this was becoming a problem in the 90s and started giving out private licenses, fueling a small but growing private sector. I stumbled upon a private restaurant in Havana and it was a totally different experience than the public ones. There was actually movement and good service. The owners had to sell good food if they wanted to stay in business. Which brings me back to the taxi driver and the doctor. The reason why taxi drivers make so much more than doctors is because they have private licenses. Their salaries are not set by the state and they can charge tourists high prices. I paid $25 to get from the airport into Havana. And in that 30 minutes, this driver made more than an average monthly salary of a Cuban, which is $20. I One of the problems with this is that you get highly trained workers leaving their trade to go do remedial work in the private sector. This guy's an engineer but he's cooking in a private restaurant. These guys are accountants by trade, but are making a killing driving around tourists on taxi bikes. This woman is a nurse, but she hasn't worked in a hospital in years. This guy is an electrical engineer, but he opened up a barber shop in his house and makes 10 times more than he would in his field of study. Imagine trying to live on the Cuban average salary of $20 per month. When you ask them how they do it, they all have the same response. Just beneath the surface in Cuba is a bustling informal market where Cubans make an additional income on top of their official salary just to survive. Sobrevivimos gracias a ese a ese mercado oscuro, ese mercado subterráneo. Cuando yo bajo de mi casa y cruzo la calle bar para comprar el periódico, ya estoy cometiendo el primer delito de receptación. Porque ese señor anciano que está vendiendo el periódico me lo está vendiendo a sobreprecio. Ya tienen arreglado esto con con la persona que trabaja en el estanquillo que le guarda los periódicos, se los vende. We tend to associate black markets with dangerous activities. But in Cuba, people sell illegal popsicles or newspapers not to get rich, but just to survive. But things are slowly changing. Since Fidel's brother Raul took over in 2008, the number of private licenses has increased significantly every year and 20% of the economy is now private. But still, most Cubans are jaded by the decades they've had to use illegal creativity just to survive.